Good morning, Year 3, and welcome to Set B of the Questions for Fun Fair. So again, I'm not going to be reading the text again this time. You have had me read that one in the previous video. Um, if you need me to read that to you, just watch the previous video at the beginning um, and then dive straight back into this one. So we're going to be going through the questions and seeing how to get the model answers um, and achieve full marks for all of these comprehension questions. Um, so here we go. Set B questions, vocabulary section number one. Look at the paragraph beginning. Calm down, young man. Find and copy a word that means great pain. Find and copy a word that means great pain. So I'm going to look back at the paragraph and I'm going to see. Um, let's see if we can find calm down, young man. Begins with that one. So right at the beginning of the line. Yep, there it is. Calm down, young man, said his mum. Your father isn't even home from work yet. When at last Rish heard the key in front <coughs> of the door, he still had the agony of having to watch his dad have a quick snap before they could set off. So, find and copy a word that means the same as great pain. Well, if you remember in the previous set of questions, um, the word agony came up in the question. Um, so hopefully you can remember that one is the one that means the same as great pain. Okay, if you're in agony about something, it's like, oh, come on, I really want to go. Okay, so that's agony. Agony is the word we need. Uh, right, question two. Look at the paragraph beginning. He was quite relieved. What does emerge mean? So look at the paragraph beginning. He was quite relieved. What does emerge mean? So even if I didn't know what emerge means, I'm going to look back at the paragraph and I'm going to have a think and see if I can work it out. So look back at that paragraph. He was quite relieved. He was quite relieved. Uh, it begins with that one, so it should be easy to find. There it is. He was quite relieved that no one knew he was there to see him emerge from the ghost train. So what do we think? Based on that sense, I'm going to read it again. I'm going to really think. He was quite relieved that no one knew he was there to see him emerge from the ghost train. What do I think the word emerge might mean? So basically the word emerge um, would just mean to come out from the ghost train, okay? So like to leave the ghost train, to emerge from it, okay? If you emerge from something, it's sort of like you were, so if you were sitting down and then you stood up, you've emerged. It means you've sort of got up, you're about to go, okay? So to come out from something along those lines. Uh, right, uh, what question are we on? Three. Question three. Um, eventually, he slumped on the floor. Which group of words means the same as slumped in this sentence? Tick one. Tick one. So eventually, he slumped on the floor. Which group of words means the same as slumped in this sentence? Now, again, you may know what the word slumped means. You may not. I'm going to use my brain and try and eliminate the ones I don't think it is and then see if I can make it easier for me to predict which one it should be if I don't know. So um, what might slumped mean? So eventually he slumped on the floor. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to replace the word slumped with all of these options and see which ones make sense. Eventually he crawled about on the floor. Could be that. Eventually he sat cross-legged on the floor. Eventually he sank down on the floor. Eventually he put his coat down on the floor. Okay, that's a bit tricky because all of those seem to make sense on that one. Mm, okay, so I can't really eliminate them. Um, but maybe I can think about the context of the sentence. Eventually he slumped on the floor. Uh, eventually he slumped on the floor. So do I think he crawled about on the floor? Um, possibly. Do I think he just sat cross-legged on the floor? Well, if you sit cross-legged on the floor, maybe you're a bit more relaxed. And at this point in the story, when he slumped on the floor, if you remember, this is where... Um, if we remember where it is in the text, uh, there it is right near the bottom. Eventually he slumped on the floor and buried his head in his hands, partly to avoid the stairs. So he's embarrassed right now. Okay, so I don't think he just sat nicely cross-legged on the floor. I don't think it's that one. Eventually he sank down on the floor. Well, he's quite embarrassed, so it very likely could be that one. He's, he's sank down. He's like, oh, really sank down. Okay, so it could be that one. Or did he put his coat down? Well, I don't remember reading anything about his coat. So, no, it's not that one. So I've managed to eliminate two. He's definitely not sat cross-legged. He's definitely not put his coat down. He's either crawled about or he sank down. Which one do I think is more likely? Did he crawl around on the floor or did he sink down in embarrassment? The answer is he sank down. Okay, he sank down. That is what slumped means anyway. Um, if you knew that, well done. But do you see how I eliminated the other options and I made it easier to choose which one it could be? Okay. Question number four. Retrieval section. What were all the rides and attractions part of? This should be really obvious, hopefully. What are they all part of? Look at the title of the text. 
it is part of a fun fair. <laughs> it's part of a fun fair. All we need to do is write down the word fun fair or a fun fair as I wrote down. A fun fair. Uh, question five. What was the first ride Rish went on? What's the first ride Rish went on? Hopefully we should know this one because we know he got very scared of it. Um, but let's see if we can actually get the evidence from the text. Uh, 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 uh. Where was it? Yep, it's um, it's just after the ice cream stall line. Um, he was quite relieved that no one was there to see him emerge from the ghost train. That's the first thing he goes on, isn't it? He emerged from the ghost train. That's the first one he went on, okay? Um, then he got on the waltzer after, didn't he? So yeah, ghost train first. Um, so there you go. It is the ghost train, question five. Uh, question six, name two rides that Padma went on. So Padma being his sister, the one who went off with dad. Two rides that Padma went on. So again, I'd be looking out for the word Padma. Well, the, sorry, the name Padma. I'd be looking out for the name Padma and seeing what she went on. So the first thing... Yeah, and does she go on? Um, so it's, it's going to be when they split off, isn't it? That's when Padma goes on her ride. So when did they split off? Uh, correctly, if no one saw, so it's a bit before that. To ease her in gently. Yeah, there we go. To ease her in gently, Dad went on. Dad went with her on a very tame merry-go-round. So merry-go-round is the first one she went on. She got on a merry-go-round. And then if you remember at the end, uh, what was Padma saying? Um... When you didn't turn up, I suggested we should go on the big wheel to see if we could spot you from up there, said Padma. So the big wheel is the other one she went on. So the first thing she went on was the merry-go-round, and then she went on the big wheel. Those are the two rides she went on. So the merry-go-round and the big wheel. Uh, question seven, we move on to the inference ones now, the ones we have to think. What had Rish been doing with his pencil? So again, I'm going to find what Rish was doing with his pencil. Where, where was he using a pencil? I remember he was doing something with a pencil. It says something about putting his pencil down. There it is. The moment he had put his pencil down, Rish was dancing around the house. So what was he doing with his pencil? Let's read the previous bit and remember what he was doing. In the morning, Rish's dad had promised to take him and his sister, Padma, to the fun fair that evening after school, as long as they had finished their homework. What was he doing with his pencil? He was doing his homework, wasn't he? He was finishing his homework, okay? So question seven was finishing his homework. Question eight. Look at the paragraph beginning, I'm the bravest. What does this suggest that Padma feels about the rides? Look at the paragraph beginning, I'm the bravest. I'm going to find that now. Where is that? I'm the bravest. It begins with that, so it's going to be right at the start somewhere. There it is. I'm the bravest, said Rish, as they paid the entrance fee. And the question was, what does this suggest that Padma feels about the rides? What does this suggest that Padma feels about the rides? So it's not going to be something we retrieve from the text. This is when we have to think. What does that mean? I'm the bravest, said Rish, as they paid the entrance fee. Why do we think he's saying that? Okay, what does that mean um, about Padma, remember? What does it suggest about Padma? So not what it suggests about Rish, not about Rish going, I think Rish feels he's the bravest, okay? Nothing to do with that. Is what does it suggest about Padma? Why is Rish saying that to Padma? What's the point? Why is he doing that? Okay, here's what I wrote down. It suggests that she was worried, scared or nervous about them because she held her dad's hand a little tighter when she heard the other people's shrieks and screams. So there's more evidence that we know that, okay? That's why Rish is saying he's trying to show off, isn't he? Okay, and he's suggesting that his sister is really scared of all the rides. That's the point, isn't it? So that's why um, it says, I'm the bravest. What does it suggest about Padma? It suggests that she is scared of the rides. That's what it suggests, okay? So... It's always about reading the question carefully. What does it suggest about Padma, not what it suggests about Rish? Question nine. Why did Rish feel uncomfortable? Why did Rish feel uncomfortable? Now, I remember reading the word uncomfortable, so I'm going to find that somewhere. Where did it say uncomfortable? There it is, next to the one with the picture of the ice cream stall, that paragraph there. Uh, if you look in the middle of that paragraph somewhere, he was beginning to feel uncomfortable. So why was he feeling uncomfortable? I'm going to read the whole thing again just to make sure I understand. The minutes dragged by as he lingered around the ice cream stall. Where were they? Had they forgotten him? Was he imagining it or were some people eyeing him in a funny way? He was beginning to feel uncomfortable. Okay, so why was he feeling uncomfortable? He was feeling uncomfortable because people were eyeing him in a funny way, weren't they? So I wrote down because people were looking at him. That's fine. That answers the question, isn't it? 
as people were looking at him. It also says about partly to avoid the stares. I could have put they were staring at him, okay? Or eyeing at him. That's it's the same thing, isn't it? Okay. So something about people looking at him. Question number 10. Summarizing. Using the whole text, tick one box in each row to show whether each statement is true or false. So using the whole text, tick one box in each row to show whether each statement is true or false. So let's have a look. Padma was excited about the fun fair. Well, I can actually remember this one, and I can remember, because I've already just said it previously, she was holding her dad's hand really tightly, wasn't she? What does that suggest? It suggests that she was scared of the rides. So was she excited about the fun fair at the beginning? No, she wasn't. Remember, it says look at the whole text, not just the end bit where she is excited because she's enjoyed it. It's the whole text. She was not excited about the fun fair. That is false. OK, she was scared of the rides at the beginning. And we know that suggested it because Rish suggested that he's the bravest. So next point, they made a good plan about where they would meet up. They made a good plan about where they would meet up. Well, we've got to think, did the plan work? What was the plan? Can you remember what the plan was? Where did they plan to meet up? Well, I've said it multiple times because there's a picture of it as well. It is the ice cream store they plan to meet up. And did that work out? Did they manage to meet there successfully? Did that go all right? Let's have a look back. Um, remember it said here at the end, Rish, Rish, are you all right? Said dad running up to him. I'm sorry, I didn't know where that. I didn't know there were two ice cream stalls. So he didn't know there were two of them. He planned to go to the ice cream store, but there were two of them. They went to the wrong one. Okay, they met him at the right. They went to the wrong one. Dad and Padma went to one of them. Rish went to the other, and he was waiting ages. So they got lost and separated. So no, that was not a good plan, was it? He didn't know there were two ice cream stalls. So that is false as well. And the last point, Rish felt uncomfortable because strangers kept talking to him. Now we just read that, didn't we? We just read about Rish being uncomfortable. Why was he uncomfortable? Was it about people talking to him? I don't think it was. I think it was because people were eyeing him. They were staring at him, not because people were talking to him. That one is also false. That means all three of those are false. Okay, none of those were true. All those statements were false. So there you go. Question number 11, authorial intent. So these are the ones that are a bit more tricky because we have to think, what did the author mean by writing that? Let's have a look. Tossed around like a sack in a washing machine. Explain why the author used this simile. Why did the author use that simile? Tossed around like a sack in a washing machine. So what did that describe? Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to look back at the text and find where it said that. So I get the full context of tossed around like a sack in a washing machine. What was tossed around like a sack in a washing machine? Um, I find that. There it is. Um, it's the paragraph above the picture that has the picture of the ice cream stall. It's the paragraph above that. Let's read the whole paragraph again. He was quite relieved that no one was there to see him emerge from the ghost train. By the time he had staggered off the waltzer, having been tossed around like a, like a sock in a washing machine, he was feeling rather wobbly. So that's the point he's trying to make there. So it's the fact he's on the waltzer and he's being tossed around like a sock in a washing machine. So why did the author write like a sock in a washing machine? What's the point of that simile? What does that tell me? So it tells me that, um, here's what I wrote down, because it suggests that he was going around and around being thrown about uncontrollably, okay? It also helps the reader to imagine how he felt, okay? So if you imagine a sock in a washing machine that's being thrown around like this, it describes perfectly what the waltzer ride is like, isn't it? It's throwing you around and around and around, so he feels like a sock in a washing machine. Remember what a simile means? A simile is a word that is similar to something else. So that's what it's like. It's like he is in a washing machine being thrown around. Okay. It's a good way to describe how the merry-go-round, uh, sorry, how the waltzer is making him feel. Okay. Um, last question. Question 12. Compare question. How does Padma's mood change throughout the story? So yesterday we looked at how Rish's mood changed throughout the story. Now Padma's is interesting, isn't it? Because she's almost gone the complete opposite of what Rish went through. So Rish started off being, oh yeah, I'm the bravest, and at the end he was all wobbly and shaky and nervous. Padma's gone the other way around, hasn't she? She's gone from the beginning to being holding her dad's hand really nervous to, oh yeah, you should have come on the um, merry-go-round with us. Or was it, you know what I mean? So um, that's the whole point, isn't it? Okay. Uh, sorry, not the merry Was it the merry-go-round or the big wheel? I can't remember now. Let me just check the text. Uh, big wheel, sorry. Big wheel, not merry-go-round. Yeah, I thought it was. 
Yeah, I thought I had that wrong. Um, yeah, so she's changed the opposite way. So here's what I wrote down as my model answer. At the beginning, Padma is scared and nervous. At the end, she feels pleased with herself about thinking of a way to spot Rish. She's also no longer scared and wants to go on more rides. Because that's what she says at the end, isn't it? She says she wants to go on some more, but Dad says maybe next time. Okay? She says, can we have another go, Dad? Because she's really excited now, isn't she? So she's gone from being really scared to now, oh, no, I want to go on some more rides. Okay? So... Well done, that's the end of set B of those uh, questions for the fanfare. So I do hope you enjoyed both of those. Um, so keep working hard. Tomorrow we're going to have a new text coming up and uh, we will do the same procedure there. So for the next two days after that, we're going to be doing set A um, and then uh, the day after that we'll be doing set B. Um, so there we go. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care and have a great day.